I will start by confessing that uh, when I was invited to speak at this uh, conference, I was quite reluctant to it. I was, um, I was thinking about what can I bring more than just another talk and yet just another presentation about what can be its significance or the added value of it. The truth is that we are so much better and faster with words than we are with actions. And maybe we should sl slow down with words and speed up the action. Because this is, um, this is what it takes no? to, to, move, uh, to change system and, uh, systems and to move fashion forward, that this uh, conference uh, says. But here I am today uh, talking, speaking in front of you. And uh, here's about me. I'm, uh, I'm from Yash, Romania, a city that now you all know. A city with a pretty long and rich history in the garments and textile industry, in a country that nowadays is the biggest, the biggest European uh, producer. I'm a local. I was uh, born and raised here, and I was living here for the most part of my adult life, after having uh, had uh, several uh, living, uh, working and studying experiences in many countries across uh, three continents. I came back home 10 years ago, about, with the aim and the de determination to apply the most popular slogan of political, political ecology, which is, we might all, you might all know it, which is think globally, act locally. I did that by uh, co-founding an NGO. The name of the NGO is My Bine, meaning for the better, and uh, nowadays is uh, the most active uh, NGO uh, in the field of human ecology, together with my colleagues uh, and the two social enterprises that we founded, Redu, one, one of them, and uh, Quib. In the last decade, we impacted about um, over 30,000 people, which is about one-tenth of the, of the community. We did it in a holistic approach, holistic approach, we call it. We did it both from the producers and consumers arenas, both approaching environmental and social justice, and uh, both in a theoretical and practical way. Like, um, like me, there are several people, including here, that believe in a better world. We know and we have to, be, to remind ourselves that we are rather marginal, that uh, we feel, um, we feel that the more, the more, the more we commit to our feelings and our thoughts, the more we feel, in a way, uh, socially abandoned or penalized. The more ambitious uh, we are, the more we are, in a way, discriminated. We are uh, often feel, feeling overwhelmed the, with the problems to be solved, the changes to be made, the actions to be taken, and at the end of the day, we, feel, we find ourselves procrastinating the bigger question of a better world. To the, to the later, uh, to, to next day. But today we are here to discuss the future perspectives of fashions. And before continuing, I want to ask you, how do you feel about the future? If you refer to this uh, industry, fashion and textiles industry. So I want you, I will ask you to raise your hands and to tell me who, who of you feels positive about it? Who of you feels negative about it? So it was, it was, it is what I was expected, that uh, it's pretty even and balanced out. Some of us are pessimistic, some other are optimistic, and I think that it's a very, very natural reaction. I'm, uh, within my work, I always find myself w with this amb ambivalent uh, feeling. We, we share two types of energies and two types of forces, none of them are uh, positive or negative or better or worse than the others. And I will start by sharing, I will start, I will continue by uh, sharing uh, my worries and concerns because I'm with you, I'm, I'm pretty worried as well. So, uh, this, uh, I will uh, refer to three main uh, or three key concepts. Uh, one is, uh, first one is honesty, second one is holism and third one is resilience. Um, it goes without saying that being uh, we have to po be positive in order to uh, determine change, to attract support and to motivate people to act. But for me, I think it's more important to be honest than to be positive. In our uh, quest for a better, uh, better world, using fashion as a tool, we have to have the courage 
to ask questions and to accept the answers. What is our ultimate impact, be it uh, indirect or direct, absolute or relative? We might find out uh, that if we are honest to each other, the environmental impact is, uh, it is always a negative one. Then the following question should arise. What have to be the, the social and the economic impact in order, uh, in order for them to wait more on a cost-benefit analysis? If we take the example of this conference, with all the flights being taken for you to come here and all the other resources to be used here, what are the, what are the indicators, the social and the economic indica indicators to prove us that uh, it, it was a successful one uh, regarding the env environmental um, impact? What, what can we do more about it? What, what we could have done less? So all these questions bring me to the second key, key point, which is holism. I see very, working uh, for a decade on, in this field of sustainability, a uh, word that we heard a lot during these days, um, I uh, realized I'm sometimes disappointed to see that there are very devoted and very ambitious people uh, working uh, on projects that are not um, addressing the interdependency. They don't have integrative approaches. It is very often to see uh, projects on ecological, circular, green economy without paying attention to the social impact and the other way around as well, vice versa. People um, developing social enterprises but uh, not, uh, not taking care of the environment. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, if we are to speak about uh, clean fashion here, because here we focus rather maybe on, uh, on the ecological aspects of fashion, if we are to speak about clean uh, fashion and clean industry, we have to remi remember always that a clean fashion means as well uh, a clean, uh, an industry with no stains as well on human dignity and human rights. This industry is among the most popular one in what uh, has been coined or termed as modern slavery. This video, the video that you just uh, saw, it was from a flash mob we organized uh, on uh, April 24th. Everybody knows what April 24th stays, stays for? Yeah, okay. So, um, yes, this is about uh, holism. I don't want to make you even more pessimistic uh, or uh, to spoil the enthusiasm of the, of, of the others. And maybe you all know it again. But the initiatives in, in fashion and textile industry that are that are um, ecologically mindful, socially respectful, and economically viable are the, the exception rather than, than the norm. Our project uh, Redu is not an exception uh, either. We are, uh, apart from the fact that it's a reference at national level, a pioneer in, uh, in Romania in uh, what is uh, green, uh, green fashion or green um, social enterprise, we try to be socially respectful by all means that we have, but we're far away from being financially sustainable. But this is maybe, this is a benefit from this conference for sure, the fact that we're coming together and we create a, a vision and we find new models and reciprocal, reciprocal inspiration. So now the, th the third point, resilience. If we are, I think that if we are um, honest and holistic, try to be holistic, we cannot miss or we cannot ignore the concept of resilience, which might find out that in the near future should be maybe a word or a concept more important than sustainability itself. Someone uh, said that we live in, a, in this generation that might be the first one to feel the effects, the effects of climate change and the last one to be able to do something about it. Yet, as someone else put it, uh, the climate summit in Davos, uh, we act as if we are at a firefighter conference and nobody is allowed to speak about water. Yet, climate change is uh, only one of the problems. There are so many other, uh, other uh, problems. So what are we doing now to adapt for the change that is happening or for, the, for these big uh, um, concerns or problems that we are facing? 
I think sustainability, it's, it's already a bit too late to speak about sustainability. We have done it for four, four decades already. But apart from all these concerns, all these concerns and all these questions, part of me is still positive and that's why I'm, I'm here with you today. Uh, and I believe that we can um, contribute to positive change and I will uh, refer to two um, simple, very simple tools, maybe. One of them, one of them is uh, re-education and one of the other one is uh, reduction of waste. We all know, I wear an R here that comes from redo, that redo comes from reduce, reuse, recycle. We all know the three R's of ecology, but we know as well that the first one is the least uh, maybe approached. I think that if we think about fashion backward, maybe it will be more, more uh, honest in a way, if we are to be serious about it, to, to speak about fashion backward, going back to frugal, so-called frugal, uh, frugal um, innovation, going back to old times where we used to be much to do much better in the field, both from environmental and social um, points of view. When you used to wear clothes for several, many more years than now, and uh, we used to, I don't know, to, uh, to use more sustainable fabrics or they were uh, easier to find. Maybe, maybe you don't get me here, but for instance, Romania, maybe it was said yesterday, I'm not sure, but Romania, only one generation ago was uh, the first European producer of hemp and it was among the biggest uh, exporters worldwide and we all almost almost lost it apart from I mean we are, we are lucky to have here initiatives like uh, the one that was uh, before me so uh, uh, um, apart from this I want to mention that I'm not referring to the reduction of waste not the material or the physical waste the mountains of waste we are all able to see, but the waste of the energy, the energy flows as well, be it natural or human, that are uh, huge in, uh, in the industry. And then I come to this other R, re-education. I think that every initiative in the field uh, has to be coupled or par paralleled with, uh, with uh, re-educating uh, people. <coughs> We know that, uh, we understood this uh, at Redu since the very beginning, and again, despite our very limited resources, uh, maybe now we are as well the, mo the most important actor to raise awareness in the country uh, concerning, concerning the, um, the bad impact of the fashion and textile industry, the second most polluting one in the world, as we know. We, we understood as well that people are more ignorant and less empathic very often because they simply don't know because of the conventional uh, media and uh, the powerful um, publicity and ads that uh, uh, are very, um, have a very big impact in our mental pollution, so-called mental pollution. So we need a new ecology of the mind as well. Because someone says, someone said that it's uh, as well as we, uh, in the same way that we are taking care about the pollution, the air we breathe, the, we breathe, the water we drink, we should watch out what enters into our brain. And um, it's very important to see what we can do to, to um, change mindsets so that we create a new culture in which looking good is not more important than feeling good and none of them are prioritized against doing good. So, um, to wrap up, we need, um, we need more um, <coughs> interdisciplinarity and uh, constant efforts to um, unlearn and relearn. I know that among us there are several um, researchers and academicians, apart from makers, producers, designers, or apart from consumers, which you, we all are. I want to share with you that I did, uh, when I did my doctoral studies, I approached degrowth. Um, a concept, a paradigm very linked with the entropy that I'm very attached to. You saw yesterday this uh, fashion, course, fashion show, some of you. 
so I approached this uh, subject and I was about to be expelled from the university for a thesis that were, seemed to, uh, to be too radical and again against the mainstream voices. That was about six or seven years ago. Last year at the European Parliament, uh, an entire conference was devoted to the subject of the growth, of the growth um, underlying the need to slow down the economy if we are serious about not leaving sustainability as a last cause. So I will finish again in an ambivalent, I told you that I'm several times ambivalent, now I will still be, uh, be at the end in an ambivalent state, mode or frame by saying that maybe um, if we want and we are devoted to, to build a more uh, sustainable industry, maybe we shouldn't be faster faster with words and no we shouldn't be we should do the other way around at the end so we should be slower with action and maybe we shouldn't be faster with words but at least we should raise uh, our voices as much as we can uh, for um, urging this uh, change that cannot be delayed uh, anymore thank you